Censorship happens every day. It affects readers, teachers, librarians, creators, and retailers everywhere. But thanks to your donations, the CBLDF is providing free legal aid, expert counseling, and education resources to protect our freedom to read. Comic books are larger now in popularity than they ever have been before. Comic books are always under assault and always are looked at to be censored. Censorship of comic books is nothing new. It goes all the way back to the 1950s when child psychiatrist Frederick Wortham declared that comic books were the be-all, end-all of childhood juvenile delinquency. And there were actually Senate subcommittee hearings on comic books, which led to industry-wide censorship of the medium. It is my opinion, without any reasonable doubt, and without any reservation, that comic books are an important contributing factor in many cases of juvenile delinquency. This censorship did not go away and reached a crescendo in 1986 when on November 18, 1986, Friendly Frank's Comics in Lansing, Illinois was busted by the police for selling obscene material to adults. Titles such as Omaha the Cat Dancer, Weirdo, Heavy Metal, Electra Assassin, Love and Rockets, Miss Tree, and Elf Quest were among those seized and labeled as obscene. This sparked a nationwide groundswell to notice that censorship was alive and well in the 80s. Why now in the 80s, though? Late 1980s, early 1990s, there was, we were at a generational shift that would not fully arrive until the year 2000. The older generation, either retaining memories of the 1950s, 1954 specifically, uh, Senate Subcommittee Investigation of the Comic Book Industry, uh, Dr. Wortham's book, Seduction of the Innocent, and the resulting demonization of the American comic book industry as being a wellspring for juvenile delinquency, that generation was aging out, but they were still active. And when I say still active, I mean uh, people who are members of church communities or local parent, you know, PTA type groups. They were alarmed at what they perceived as having long been some bastard form of children's literature beginning to manifest more and more and more clearly adult um, or mature reader content. Violence, slick art, and sadistic sex. Your kids may be reading all about it in the comic books. She's a sadomasochistic prostitute with a taste for leather. He's depraved and a homicidal maniac. Who are they? Well, they're none other than the Catwoman and the Joker. No fooling. The funnies have changed a lot since we were kids. The comic books your kids are reading may contain violence, sex, bondage, and death. Critics say the books are corrupting our youth and should be tightly controlled. Their creators claim the comics are a free form of expression, constitutionally protected. When was the last time you looked at a comic book? You probably thought they were for kids. Well, take a look now, because comic books have grown up. They're just not for kids anymore, most of them. Perhaps they used to be, but now definitely they're not. Kids can still read them, but it's like, you know, the kind of stories they, they, that the writers write for them, it's like it's more for an older audience. This brings us to the topic of this video, the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, the CBLDF. They were formed in the wake of the Friendly Franks bust when a nonprofit group was necessary to try and combat all of the censorship or the calls for censorship that were going on in the United States against comic books. Uh, then, then you only have very specific, very powerful groups telling you how to think and why. Formed by Dennis Kitchen when he saw no other alternative than to form a nonprofit group to help creators fight for their rights. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund has defended hundreds of comic books that you've probably never heard of from being censored by local or state authorities. 
The most egregious case was the 1994 Florida artist Michael Diana and his comic book Boiled Angel. A one-time suspect in the Gainesville murders faces obscenity charges. Michael Diana. Michael Diana. Michael Diana. Michael Diana. Diana publishes a magazine called Boiled Angel. A comic book filled with sadism. Not any innocent soft pornography. This is hardcore psychopathic material. I knew right away that what I was looking at was obscenity. What happened to him was so profoundly wrong and why the First Amendment is necessary and what it means. To this day, Michael Diana is the only comic artist who has ever been found to have created legally obscene material in the United States. This actually happened. In 1997, Planet Comics was raided. Verotica, The Mighty Morphin Rump Rangers, Screamers, Sex Wad, Neferisimo, Beatrix Dominatrix, and others were also seized and declared to be legally obscene. It is always boiling under the surface. Just recently, Mouse, one of probably the most literate comics of all time, has been banned from schools and libraries. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is a nonprofit organization that goes out of its way to defend the rights of creators, and of freedom. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund is an organization I personally have donated to. The Comic Book Legal Defense Fund, you may never have heard of it before now, but they are there fighting for your rights.